Hello and welcome to another video blog series. So, hey, Janina. Hi. Hey. So, I have Janina Stensky. That's right. That's yep, right. perfect. Um, here with me for another video blog. I was just telling Janina how bad I am at saying names. So, I was <laughs> making sure I got it right. So, I do these video blogs um, about once a month. And Janina and I had met around, I guess it was like a few months ago now, because we were both in a marketing group. And her and I clicked quite well because we both have the same mindset. So, the both my same mindset is around like weight inclusive care in terms of like. Mine is obviously nutrition care and hers is training. So I will let Janina introduce herself and just, yeah, I'll, then I'll get into the interview questions. Perfect. Cool. Thanks so much for having me, Renee. I really appreciate the interview. And uh, yeah, I just started my business because um, I wanted to help other people, like you said, like change their mindset and really challenge this traditional approach to exercise and fitness that we've been sold and realized that if that's not working for you, there's a better way. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Love it. And your business is called the self care trainer. Yes. Yes. So you can find me on Instagram at self care dot trainer. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and helping women, uh, just improve their well being with, with exercise and movement, whatever that looks like for them. Nice. I have some questions here. So you kind of answered what is your business and who do you serve? So why did you create your business? And it was kind of recent that you started your business, right? That's right. So I always had it in the back of my mind that I wanted to do something on the side and start my own thing. And then I was, you know, trapped in my apartment for an unforeseen amount of time um, in mid-March. And I decided to start up the Instagram page. And like you mentioned, joined uh, the YYC Fempreneurs Marketing Group. And that really helped me take things to the next level. That's when I met my coach. Um, so when I actually started my business, I was just gung-ho, like, into diet culture just ready to launch like a summer weight loss program and um, had no idea that this other alternative universe existed um, and the reason that it really resonated with me and I chose to pivot that that approach that I was taking in my training business mm -hmm. Um, is because that I had been really sucked into diet culture and it had negatively impacted my well-being in every area of my life. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't realize it until I had discovered the anti-diet movement um, and read Anti-Diet by Christy Harrison and started listening to her podcast and chatting with uh, great anti-diet dietitians like you, Renee. So it really <laughs> helped me just open my eyes and go, oh my gosh, like there, there has to be something better if if I was so sucked into it, I want to help other women who are, you know, just not happy with how this traditional approach to exercise and, you know, burning calories and all those things, mm -hmm. if it's not working for you, that's, that's okay. You don't have to keep doing that. So, um, yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, I find that so interesting because it happened to me too. Like it was sort of this moment of reading intuitive eating. It was sort mm -hmm. of like this like instant sort of switch that happened. And it, it was like I was prepared for it. Like I was ready to hear that information. And it sounded kind of like that was your case too. Like you were geared up to do this weight loss kind of program for the summer. But then once you took in that information, you were like, wow, yes, this is so aligned with what I'm actually thinking in my core, like of who I am. And you really connected with it. Absolutely. Really well said, because that is exactly how I feel. Like I had kind of been uh, dipping my toes in the anti-diet water for a little while without realizing there was a name for it and mm -hmm. training my clients at the gym with this sort of more gentle, individualized approach as opposed to a blanket push as hard as you can. Mm. Um, so I kind of had those almost concepts already down pat and was using them in my everyday life. And then, like you said, I read anti-diet and I just like, bam, this is what I needed to read. Like, yeah, <laughs> thank God I found it. So yeah, I feel so fortunate that that information is out there because, yeah, yeah then we can actually get a little bit of a, a different picture from, 
you know, that's maybe that standard that's even in our training, you know, even like my training was pretty weight centric. And so it's nice to have that other option to explore and look at and say like, there is another way to go about this. Like you don't Mm -hmm. have to have weight loss and focus on shrinking your body to have health (laughs) and to have wellness in your life. Yeah. So that's so, I'm so excited that you do this training. (laughs) It like aligns so much with what I um, believe in. So that's why we're chatting today for sure. So I want you to talk a little bit about, um, because I was curious as to how a session with you would be different Mm -hmm. than another trainer who isn't like a self-care trainer or a weight inclusive trainer. So give me the details of like from intake to like actually like the workouts, how it would be unique for you. Totally. So the beautiful part, the the kind of foundation behind using exercise for self-care, any kind of physical activity or movement, um, when I say exercise or workout, that's just, it's whatever works for that individual. Mm -hmm. Um, So, so yeah, individualized training is the foundation of using exercise for self-care instead of this blanket you know, here's a program, go do it no matter what. Um, Let's like work with you where you're at. Let's really tune into your body and sort of take those intuitive eating principles and turn them into intuitive exercise principles where you're able to check in with yourself and say, what are my energy levels? What are my mood? Uh, What is my mood? And just noting maybe the workout that you had planned that day might not always be the best workout for you in that moment. Um, and, and having the self-compassion to say, that's okay. Um, there is just, diet culture tells us that we have to feel guilty and feel so much shame if you, if you skip a workout or if you don't push yourself to the max every time. And I had absolutely fallen into that trap where I had become obsessive with exercise to the point where it was fitness over everything else. Um, and that's where I said it was negatively affecting my quality of life, my well-being, and I want to help other women take the focus off of this fitness over everything and just learn to practice self-compassion, learn to tune into your body, um, and be willing to adapt the plan. So as a coach, quite honestly, the, the exercises that we do might not be different for that person. The intake um process bringing somebody in and just getting to know them and what their goals are i'm going to explain that my intention is to help you shift your focus away from this you know i want to lose weight tone up build a booty those are kind of the main three things i hear which is great those are valid goals Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day my experience showed me that that's you're you're kind of like chasing the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow i like that metaphor for some reason where Mm -hmm. it's like but the pot of gold keeps moving. If we're focused on weight, it's always going to be like, I want to lose X more pounds. Um, and the truth is that's just not a very realistic or fulfilling, uh, approach. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we focus on that, it takes away from the experience almost. That's a big part of it too. So helping you throughout the process of intake to exercising, to reflecting, to really learn those skills of tuning in, practicing self-compassion, um, and just trying to combat that exercise guilt. Mm-hmm. Um, with that being said, for myself, back in my you know obsessive exercise days where I was stuck in diet culture, I had started taking up running. Now, all you runners out there, um, good for you. I'm glad you love it, Renee. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. And I'm <laughs> not really. <laughs> get back into running, right? It might not be a forever hiatus, but for now I've taken kind of a break and said, you know, that doesn't feel good for my body right now. And the thought of running and just putting on my shoes so I can go out and push myself harder because I know that's what I'm going to do is I'm going Mm -hmm. to get into that headspace of critical self-talk instead of compassionate self-talk. I just have a little bit more work to do before I can get myself back to that sort of exercise. So I've taken a break. And that's okay. I'm working on my strength instead of my cardio right now. And really just choosing to do exercises that work well for me, that feel good for me, that feel rewarding, boost my mental health, as opposed to trying to push myself into this box of like, I need to do cardio because I should. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like an exercise session for self-care might look the same as it would have before with a different mindset, but it might also say, hey, let's take this 
thing that you were stuck onto for a while and put it on the back burner and try something new. Mm -hmm. Maybe exercise for self-care is just going for a stroll and exploring new areas in your neighborhood. And uh, my role as a coach is to guide you through that journaling and that reflecting process. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so it's it's totally individualized. Yeah, and we were talking, um, I think I just mentioned to you when we were chatting one time that I was trying to figure out how to have a program and not feel like guilt when I didn't do something um, because I had like an obligation to my trainer to actually get my program done. And I was like, but this program is for me. Why am I feeling guilty if I'm not doing it? And then feeling bad when it comes to like telling my trainer I didn't do it. I was like, "Mm, okay, (laughs) I need to think about that differently. I absolutely love that spin on it, Renee. Like, I'm doing this for me. Why am I feeling pressured to to meet somebody else's expectations? Yeah, it's for you. And that is something, uh, during this pandemic, the first time that I hired my coach um, was, was Mark. He's an amazing coach at training strong women and he has helped me so much in building my strength but Mm -hmm. for the first couple months honestly I felt the same thing Renee where it was like hey like gosh I only did like one out of my three workouts but I still did this and that and I was trying to justify (laughs) missing a workout I was feeling guilty about it beating myself up and it just Mm -hmm. takes a little bit of practice of and the same with intuitive eating and this Mm -hmm. anti-diet mindset of, of just noticing that thought notice it see it there acknowledge it and then yep. challenge it like you can choose different thoughts <laughs> yeah. and that's the amazing part of all of this anti-diet stuff is that there's just options and you can you can challenge those default modes yes and I think like what you said with recognizing it and then for me sometimes it's just like saying it out loud like talking to you about it and talking to my trainer about it and be like I'm feeling guilty because I missed a workout and telling you that I'm not actually caring for me (laughs) but I feel bad telling you so just talking about it with your trainer too and having that open conversation I think is important Absolutely. Because yeah, in that, you know, coach client relationship, there has to be a lot of trust and openness and transparency to just say, yeah, this is what I'm feeling and what I'm struggling with. Because otherwise, how else is your coach going to guide you? Yeah, and pivot or change things up. Yeah. So my next question is, how can people tell if they're getting enough rest or recovery? Because obviously kind of part of that self-care is also rest, not just the exercise. So what signals from the body or like how do people know if they're getting enough rest? Absolutely. Um, I'm so glad you asked this question because I was thinking about it the last couple of days and that's something I'm still working on. Noticing in myself is Mm -hmm. those kind of signals that my body sends when I what does it feel like to be well rested? We all know what it feels like to be tired and low energy, um, but really trying to place a name on on those sensations in your body. Uh, I don't think I have the words for that right now, but um, it, again, it's going to be different for everybody, right? Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, if you were to go for your run, Renee, and you're dragging your feet, you know you had a long day, you're stressed out, and you're just not feeling it, mm-hmm. It's just taking that moment to say, okay, what can we do instead? Um, And noticing that you are feeling tired and acknowledging that. um, Back in my obsessive exercise days, it didn't matter what I was feeling. Mm. I was just going to push through those barriers. And we have to take that pressure off ourselves to just kind of ignore and and detach ourselves from our body and what it's telling us and listen to the, the external sensate not sensations the external feedback that we're getting from from diet culture and maybe uh trainers who are infused in diet culture (laughs) yeah Uh, and you know damaging apps i don't want to name any specific ones but you know what i mean these things i know which ones (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) um i tell you you know like i have this all or nothing mindset you know no excuses enough of that there are valid reasons to skip a workout, to call it a day, to finish early, to uh, walk instead of run, and whatever other examples that looks like in other types of fitness. Um, For example, I know there are days when I'm doing my strength workout that Mark has written for me, Mm -hmm. and I'll do two sets instead of three, because Mm -hmm. I know that the movement is going to make me feel good. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to feel stronger afterwards, 
but I don't have the energy in that moment for whatever reason. Again, maybe it has to do with how much water I drank or didn't drink or how much food I had or when I ate it yep. um, and how much sleep you had, your mental space, all these things impact it. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to make that call and say, I need rest. The sensations, again, like I said, I think we're all pretty familiar with you know, your feet are dragging or you just right. being feel tired. Happy. Yeah. You feel yeah. tired. Um, you're groggy. You're in a bad mood. You can't think clearly. All these things mm -hmm. are just your body telling you, please take a minute, <laughs> sit down and, and nourish yourself. And maybe that's a good opportunity to do some stretching or some foam rolling or a light walk as opposed to whatever you had planned in the moment. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. For me, I think I kind of saw rest as like this sort of default of like, oh yeah, I have to do it. Cause like people yeah. say that it's, it's good for me. Like, mm -hmm. but I never really connected with like my body's cues. Yeah. And actually being like, when does my body need to rest and how can I tell? And so that mindfulness aspect of like slowing things down and not just necessarily like pushing through an hour exercise class, but actually thinking like checking in throughout the class and being like, what is my heart rate? Is it really high? Am I feeling like I'm gasping for breath? Am I like sweating like really intensely? <laughs> like, am I really thirsty? Am I feeling fatigued? Like things that you have to figure out in your own body really and connecting it. And then I'm like, okay, I need to back off. I need to slow down for a bit or I need to like maybe leave the class a bit early, those kind of things, right? Like just really connecting with your body. Yeah, so important <laughs> for training. It is. And the thing is that, you know, the same workout might feel t different on two different days. Yes. And there might be times where pushing yourself will feel good. And you're like, yeah, I'm sweating. I feel amazing. Um, and there might be other times where, yeah, you, you decide dialing it back is what I need right now. Mm -hmm. And just giving yourself permission to do either one of those things will always have that choice. Yes. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> giving yourself permission. Yeah. Cause no one else needs to give you permission. You can just give it to yourself <laughs> in this self-care. Yeah. Um, so my other question is, um, oh, what if people have a scheduled workout, but they don't feel like doing it as part mm -hmm. of the program. Um, because I know people want to have like a program sometimes, um, and they want to like get their money out of it or whatever and do all this, the things. Um, but what if you have a scheduled workout and you just don't, you just don't want to go? Like, what do you do? Totally. Um, I think that's, that's very common. That's a human experience, right? On a day to day, our energy levels are going to fluctuate. Um, I think something that I like to implement because again, I know that the movement is going to help me feel better in the long run. Instead of, you know, forcing myself to commit to this, whatever, eight exercises of this much and that, mm -hmm. let's just do five minutes of something. Let's do our warm up, And then let's check in and see how that feels. Um, let's just foam roll and see how that feels. Let's just kind of get things going a little bit. And like I said, maybe you do one set of a couple of exercises and then take a little rest. And then you go back and do the second set if that feels good. Mm. Um, and, and really just adjusting based on how you're feeling that day. Because it's, there, if you're working towards reaching a goal, maybe you're training for an event or a competition, there's got to be room for those days um, and a little bit of room for rest in your program. So communicate with your coach. Absolutely. And say, Hey, I wasn't feeling it. This is what I did instead, or I'm going to do it tomorrow instead and have your coach work with you because they should be supporting you in that journey. Um, Cause at the end of the day, it's far more valuable that you were able to check in with yourself and honor that and honor what your body needed and honor what your mind needs um, as opposed to just forcing it mm -hmm. to get the gains, right? Because that's just going to be far more fulfilling in the end. Yeah, I really like what you said. And I think that highlights the point of how maybe also you might be quite different than other trainers. Like mm -hmm. if you think about you know, a program and I've had lots of programs like a learn to run program or a, like mm -hmm. even like a mar half marathon program. There isn't always room for flexibility in that, you know, sometimes, and I tell this to my clients too, like sometimes you're not going to get things done because life happens. <laughs> and so 
in your program, I do feel like there needs to be room for life to happen um, as well and for you to skip workouts and that to be okay if you're training for a goal specifically too, right? Yeah. Totally. And mm-hmm. we can still work towards our goals without necessarily uh, reaching that 100% maximum mm-hmm. effort. Maybe if you're feeling 50% that day, I heard this on a podcast and I can't remember who or else I'd totally give them credit. But if you're feeling 50% that day, then showing up for yourself 100% is going to be showing up at that 50%. Right. Like, <laughs> That's so true. Own. Totally. Um, and I love- yeah walking up a hill or walking on flat ground. I don't know why I said a hill. Walking is still going to help maintain and improve your cardiovascular as opposed to pushing on that run, maybe to a different extent, but you're still moving your body and you're still working towards that within what's reasonable in that Mm -hmm. moment. That makes sense. Yeah. I love that. Um, and having the compatibility of like having a goal and still working towards it without having to like destroy your body and your life because of it, like still having the two things like be compatible (laughs) with each other. I think that's so important. Yeah. I love that approach. So the last question I have is that kind of ties into this too, is how can people be motivated, um, to work out without having to have a weight loss goal? Because I think that's something that I hear also for nutrition. It's like, well, will I want to actually eat better or eat well um, if I don't want to focus on being on a diet or a program or a plan that will give me a weight loss result? How do I motivate myself to actually do things that are healthy for my body? Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. I think that's a super common question, especially when the anti-diet approach is is really new to somebody. It's kind of counterintuitive to everything that we've been told. Mm -hmm. Um, And it takes a little bit to get a a grasp on. I think at the end of the day, if your goal is to lose weight, there's something you want to accomplish by losing weight. So what are those little things? Let's shift the focus to all the things like your sleep and your energy levels and your mood. Um, like your well being is just way more than your what you look like, first of all, uh, but also just your physical health and fitness. Sure, that's important, but so is your social connectedness. So is your uh, ability to have joyful things in your life and that feeling of accomplishment. All those things make up your sense of well being. So if we can shift the attention away from the physical components and focus on the way that exercise can improve your quality of life. Um, and just, just feeling like you have some purpose and something to look forward to. Right. Yeah, so I love that. Uh, yeah, for me, that really resonates quite significantly because when I started to shift that mindset, I started to think about like what movement I actually like to do. So like, what do I enjoy? And that shifted like based on the season, the time, like things that were going on. If I, you know, saw like it was beautiful outside, it's like, I want to go for a walk outside today. I don't want to do strength training in my basement. (laughs) So, you know, like it shifts based on kind of me in my life. And I love having that shift and it really motivates me to like, do what feels good. And then that obviously feels good. So then it motivates me to keep going to do other things that feel good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's a really important part. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, Well, two things. First of all, you're right, Renee, life is unpredictable and crazy. And it's really tempting to try to use food and exercise as a way to like, get a handle, like control Mm -hmm. stuff in your life. Yeah. Um, but that's not always helpful. Sometimes it's more helpful to let go of some of that control. And, and like we said, work towards your goals, but be flexible, right? Mm -hmm. The second thing is um, journaling. And this is something that I really encourage my clients Mm -hmm. to do. And something I actually reflected on today that I should probably do more consistently. Um, Coaches are not perfect. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) After my workout, because there's a really good chance after you did your your joyful movement, whatever it is that you decided you, you actually felt like doing that day, mm-hmm. that you're going to have an elevated mood and elevated energy levels and maybe a clear mind or you're more focused and ready to get back to what you were doing before. Mm-hmm. Um, so if we can capture that moment in a selfie or a note on your phone mm-hmm. or a text to a loved one or writing in a physical journal, whatever that looks like for you, if we can 
write that as like a note to like future self. <laughs> I feel better after this workout. Mm -hmm. That's going to help bring you back to that moment so that maybe there's a day when you're not feeling as motivated for whatever reason. You can look back and say, okay, like past me said that this has worked before. Let's give it a try. Let's try those first five minutes, do the warm up. Mm -hmm. um, and that's helping you go back to that mindfulness and just checking in with yourself too. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love this all. <laughs> this is so good. Thank you, Janina. I, um, I hope everyone watching got so much out of it because I really feel like, especially training, there's so much value in having a coach and a trainer. And the, there's definitely a, a lot of a different shift between what you do and what would people would think of maybe when they think of a trainer um, in the gym and what they would help with. So I love your uniqueness in your business. I love the drive that you have and the way you're going um, in your business. So thank you for sharing it. Absolutely. And thank you so much, Renee, again, for interviewing me. And uh, I'm just really excited talking to you about it because you're super excited about it too. And it's a uh, it's, it's really nice. It's a nice change of mind for sure. Mm -hmm. So remind people again, how can they find you? <laughs> um, so you can find me on Instagram at selfcare.trainer. Um, and I have released a new ebook earlier in July, the four first steps to getting started with using exercise for self-care. So click on the link in my bio and you can download that. And uh, I'd love to like hear your feedback and see if there's any way I can help you on that journey too. Are you still also doing your workouts on Saturdays, Saturday morning? Um, or is thank that you for job? asking. Yeah. I have to miss the next two weekends. Mm -hmm. So keep an eye on my stories. I'm going to put out a poll to see what time everybody wants uh, starting in August. And I'll get those back going again for sure. Cause I love hosting those. Um, yeah. Like a, a welcoming, inviting space where, where you can make your work out your own. So. Perfect. So please follow Janina on Instagram and connect with her, especially if you're looking for a trainer who is more self-care and weight inclusive focused and not focusing on just like specific weight loss goals. That would be great. All right. Thanks, Janina. Thanks, Renee. Bye. Yeah.